Time to learn a little bit about Jamal Charles. Jeff. When people talk about the best backs in the NFL today, they have to start with this guy. Last year, he accounted for more yards than any other non-quarterback in the NFL. But he's had to deal with some pretty heavy stuff, including two years ago, the murder-suicide involving Javon Belcher, the former Chiefs linebacker, and Cassandra Perkins. Has he ever talked about that? He has never, ever talked about that day, his feelings, what went on. He and his wife hadn't talked much about it amongst themselves. Yeah. You could see him, like, you know, really, like, rubbing his, his, his pants and just trying to find the strength to talk about it. He may never overcome that one moment. What's going on, man? No, what's up, man? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Yeah. It's mid-June. <laughs> Jamal Charles is visiting the neighborhood he once called home. This next neighbor right here. I used to always run into her yard right here and be getting, get out of my yard. <laughs> you been no two. Staying out of trouble. Staying man. out of trouble. Out of trouble. Love, man. Keep staying out of trouble, All right. though, boy. All right, man. All right. Port Arthur, Texas a city of 53,000 near the Louisiana border, the part of Texas that's more Cajun than cowboy. Next time, are we going to get him? This is Jamal Charles' hometown. Y'all ready? It's a place that's not easy to escape from. I love Jamal Charles' game. It was some tape I was watching. You know, he's leaving defenders in the dust. He can do everything. He wants to be the best ever. And he's already on his way. The 27-year-old is the NFL's all-time leader in yards per carry among running backs. Better than Jim Brown. Better than Barry Sanders. But along the way, Charles has carried more. The burden of a heavy heart, disability, and pain. Some days I wanted to give up. How can I ever leave Port Arthur? And, and it finally happened. 20, 15, 10, and Charles finds the promised land. Jamal Charles was born two days after Christmas in 1986. His father was not there to raise him. His mother, who worked as a nursing aide, wasn't always around either. My mom helped me raise him. She was always there. If I had to go to work, she kept me. They was good parents. Jamal grew up with his three brothers here, his grandparents' home, 2101 East 17th Street. The house was the hub for his extended family, which included 32 cousins, many of whom lived here with Jamal. When you were small, did you realize how small this house was? Was so many people were up in it? <laughs> now I look, I'm like, man, this house is really small. I guess I was happy to have my head laid down on something, but yeah, it's a three bedroom house, one bathroom, so. You used to have to try to get to be the first one in the bathroom. We had a big enough family to play. We playing football, we're going to play 11 on 11. Basketball, 5 on 5, somebody going to sit on the side. Growing up, you know what I'm saying, you, you didn't have everything, but you had family. We all play sports, and we got our kids involved in sports, just to keep them out of trouble. And trouble was everywhere. When Jamal was growing up in the 90s, Port Arthur had one of the highest crime rates in the country. I had friends as was uh, was gang members, but I mean, I, I guess I was one of them persons just uh, not to get involved with. I guess I wanted to play sports, just kept me away from it. Jamal started playing football when he was five. That came easy. Homework didn't. Growing up, I wasn't very smart. My brother here tried to teach me. When I was uh, small, he would try to teach me, and I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't listen to him. 
Jamal would run over the commas and he would run over the periods, you know, and and he would, you know, fumble with some words. He was shy about uh, reading in class because he felt the kids were going to, uh, were, were gonna, you know, make fun of him. I remember my cousin picking on me, talking about you ain't gonna never go, to, you ain't gonna never go nowhere. It really hit me when she said that to me. It really like hurt me. When Jamal was in third grade, his teachers realized that something was wrong. They tested him and discovered he had a severe learning disability. He would need to take special education classes. What was that like for you? I tried to like hide from some of my friends that see me going into classes because I didn't want nobody to talk about me. I didn't want to stay in the house and go over the alphabets and go over the, the pronounce of the words. I used to always want to just go and play sports. Jamal's learning disability led to an unlikely opportunity. In 1996, 10 year old Jamal competed in the Special Olympics. And you race against kids, and well, I'd always be the one out there just beating everybody. It changed him. Shortly after, Jamal joined a local track team and there found something else confidence. That's when I first feel like I can make it in life. It just opened me up. It just, I thought I probably, if, if, if I probably would never ran track and none of that, I'd probably be at home still right now doing nothing, looking for a job. Jamal carried that confidence with him to Port Arthur Memorial High. By his senior year in 2004, he was a state champion in the 110 and 300 meter hurdles. His speed also became his signature on the football field. Jamal just had that speed. Once Jamal would break, there was no doubt you wasn't gonna catch Jamal. He was over. He was a hard worker, and I mean, he was determined to be the best. And he was. His senior year, Jamal rushed for over 2,000 yards, scored 25 touchdowns, and was a parade All-American. The best football programs in the country came calling, and Jamal chose the University of Texas, four hours from home. He asked us our honest opinion, and we said you were really special, and you were really good. The thing you've got to do is be able to stay healthy. You've got to get bigger. You've got to get stronger before you can become a great football player. His freshman year, Jamal scored 11 touchdowns, helping the Longhorns to a national championship. The Texas Longhorns have won it. He also was an All-American on the track. And Jamal Charles holds on. But after his sophomore year, he knew he couldn't do both forever. Track is my first love, so, and track will always be my first love. But it's just something that I had to choose which one can really help my family out more financial-wise. So, you know what I'm saying, I end up choosing uh, football. By then, Jamal met a girl named Whitney. A mutual friend of ours introduced us, and when I first met him, he shook my hand, and he wouldn't let it go. And he was really a genuinely nice guy. Um, and the more I got to know him, that was undeniable. She understood me, and I told her uh, all about my secrets, about uh, I had a learned disability and all that, and she was like, oh, okay. And you know what I'm saying, she, she, she was fine with it. His junior season, 2007, Jamal rushed for over 1,600 yards and 18 touchdowns. He declared for the NFL draft. April 26, 2008, in the first two rounds of the draft, seven running backs were taken. Jamal Charles was not one of them. I cried the next night because I'm like, dang, what's wrong? Well, well my dreams come true. The second day came, and that's when the Chiefs called me. With the 73rd pick, the Kansas City Chiefs have selected Jamal Charles. I feel like I was building some of the running backs that got picked in front of me. So I started playing like I was a first round guy. 30, 25, 20, 
Rodgers on that electric speed. 10, 5, touchdown, Kansas City. In 2009, his second NFL season, Jamal emerged the Chiefs' number one back, rushing for over 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. He and his girlfriend Whitney were now living together in Kansas City. That Thanksgiving, they invited Whitney's cousin, Cassandra, to join them for dinner. One of Jamal's new teammates was also there, Javon Belcher. We were all at a teammate's house for Thanksgiving dinner, and Javon was a rookie. And that night after dinner, we were heading to the movies. And I guess Javon told Jamal, you know, he was interested in Cassie and could he come to the movies with us? And Jamal told him, sure, you know, come on. I mean, I, I think they clicked. They clicked. Bella's like, yeah, introduce me to her. She's very beautiful. I really treated Cassie like a little sister, even though she was a Whitney cousin. And so Jamal's teammate, Javon Belcher, and Whitney's cousin, Cassandra Perkins, began dating. They was happy around each other. And I saw him, and I saw him, they all was just happy. She loved uh, she loved him so much. And I know that loved her too. Jamal also had a lot to be happy about. The following year, he was named first team all pro and led the Chiefs into the playoffs. In July of 2012, he and Whitney were married. Cassandra Perkins was seven months pregnant. Two months later, she and Javon Belcher welcomed a baby girl named Zoe. Then came December 1st, 2012. Okay, so she's been shot? No. Okay, right now is she awake? No, I'm just with me. Yeah. Tragedy off the Chiefs football field. Investigators tell us 25-year-old Javon Belcher shot his girlfriend. She was so sweet. Then drove to the practice facility. And then turned the gun on himself. Jamal Charles has said little about what happened that day until now. Why did you feel like it was your fault? 